In this tutorial, we'll be expanding on our new tile types by creating some specialised types, ice and conveyor belts. The tile sheet for this tutorial, as well as the complete source code and a written version of this lesson, are all available on my website. Conveyor belts will force the character to move in a specific direction when they stand on them, until the character's movement is blocked by a solid object, or they have been moved off of the conveyor. Ice tiles will force the character to keep moving in the direction they were travelling when they enter the tile, until they encounter a solid object or have been moved off of the iced area. Our map data array, game map, will first be modified to make use of all the new types of tile. Next, we'll modify our floor types list to include five new floor types. Ice and conveyor U, D, L and R, a conveyor type for each of the four directions of travel. Now we'll add the five new tile types to our tile types list. These make use of the new ice and conveyor floor types, and the conveyor belts all have multi-frame animated sprites, so the player can see they are moving tiles. To account for the changes, the character process movement method will be modified. After a movement has been completed, we will now check the tile type the character is standing on. We begin by assigning the type of the tile at the character's position to a variable we will call tile floor. If this tile's floor type is ice, we check and see if the character can move in the direction they're currently facing. If so, we continue movement in that direction using a new method we'll be creating shortly, move direction. If the tile floor type is any of the conveyor belt types, we'll test if the character can move in the direction of the conveyor belt. If so, we begin this movement. We also update our character can move to method. I will check to see if the destination tile is not path. We'll also test if the target tile type is not ice or conveyor, as none of these floor types block character movement. Here, we'll create another directional movement test, can move direction which takes a directions object property as its argument. A switch statement in this method calls the appropriate canMove method for the direction we're testing and returns its response. We'll also create a new moveDirection method, which takes the directions property as well as the current game time as its arguments 
and cause the corresponding move method. With these modifications, we can create some movement puzzles in our tile map. Similar tile types are often employed for puzzles in the tiled Pokemon games, as well as many others. <laughs> 